Hello guys. So in this session we are going to talk about the topic tumors of the maxillary sinus. So under this topic we are going to discuss under various headings such as your classification of the tumors, clinical features and its complications, the spread of the maxillary sinus tumors such as your intracranial spread, lymphatic spread and the systemic spread, the clinical classification to determine the prognosis of the maxillary sinus, the diagnostic criteria and the treatment of the tumors. So first let us start with the classification of the maxillary sinus tumors. So usually the maxillary sinus tumor will arise from the lining epithelium. So lining epithelium of the sinus. So obviously it can be either benign or malignant. So in most of the conditions the, the tumors can arise outside the maxillary sinus such as your maxillary bone or other sites and it can penetrate into the maxillary sinus. For example tumors like your amyloblastoma or any fibrosis lesions like your fibrous dysplasia or ossifying fibroma or sometimes it can arise within the maxillary sinus from the lining like your inverted papillomas or your hemangiomas. So all these are going to be your benign tumors of your maxillary sinus. Coming to malignant tumors, 80% of the malignant tumors will be obviously your squamous cell carcinomas. Very rarely it can have aggressive tumors such as your anaplastic carcinoma your adenocarcinoma, sometimes your melanoma can also arise from your maxillary sinus. So all these are the tumors which can arise from the maxillary sinus, so benign and malignant tumors. So coming to the clinical features, so obviously you can be classifying the maxillary sinus clinical features into the early features and the late features. So what are the early features? The early features are going to mimic your maxillary sinusitis like where uh, there will be tenderness or pain, unilateral pain over the facial area and there can be repeated nasal discharge. So it will definitely mimic your maxillary sinusitis. But eventually, obviously it is going to erode your sinus wall in either one of the directions. So it will result in the late complications depending upon where the tuber is going to present on. So obviously you can see the picture here. This is going to be the maxillary sinus with a medial wall just a minute yeah this one is going to be the medial wall this one is going to be the inferior wall superior wall lateral wall and obviously anteriorly you are going to have your skin and the other superficial structures posterior that means behind the maxillary sinus you are going to have your sphenoid bone a cribriform plate and your cranial fossa so if the tumor is going to erode your medial wall since it is going to relate it to the no, nasal cavity you are going to have features such as your nasal obstruction obviously so you're going to have features such as so medial wall so you're going to have features such as nasal obstruction we are going to have purulent nasal discharge you are going to have occasional epistaxis and sometimes you will be also having some kind of sinus spread which means we are going to have your ethmoidal sinus here. Can you see? These are ethmoidal sinuses. So obviously it can have sinus spread and the pathology can present as antroethmoidal pathology. So obviously while removing the tumor, the care should be taken to remove the pathological stuff from the ethmoidal sinus also. So all these are about the medial spread. Coming to the superior spread, obviously the superior wall is going to relate to the orbital floor. So any kind of tumor which spreads to the superior wall can have or can present with features such as your ocular pain, propoptosis, diplopia or double vision and sometimes we will be having increased amount of tear secretion from the eyes also. It is called as epiphora. So all these are the features if the tumor is going to erode your superior wall. Coming to the inferior wall, obviously inferior wall is related to the oral cavity. It is being related to the palatal surface of your maxillary bone and also your maxillary teeth. So obviously the tumor, if it is going to erode the inferior wall, you can have the expansion of the alveolus, which means you will be able to see that there is some swelling in the gingival area with respect to the site where the tumor is going to be present. So expansion of the alveolus can be an important feature that you can able to see it intraorally. Apart from that, you can able to see ulceration of the gingiva. We will be able to see swelling of the heart palate. And obviously, there will be dearranged occlusion, there will be difficulty in speech, difficulty in mastication, etc. So all these are the features related to 
the tumor eroding the inferior wall of the maxillary sinus. Obviously, if the tumor is going to spread in the anterior aspect, so obviously anterior wall, which is going to be related to the face, which means the skin, facial skin and the related structures. So, you will be having a very large swelling in the cheek. Sometimes it can erode the facial skin and can present as invasion to the facial skin and ulcerations extra orally also. So, usually squamous cell carcinoma or anaplastic carcinoma, if it is going to invade the anterior wall, obviously it can present as a swelling and ulceration of the chin area. Swelling and ulceration of the chin area. So, these are the features if the tumor is going to erode the anterior wall. Obviously, posteriorly, which means behind the maxillary sinus, you are going to have your pterygo maxillary fissure. You are going to have a lot of muscles of mastication, which is coming towards the temporomandibular joint. And you will be also having a cranial fossa. So, if the tumor, some kind of aggressive tumors like amyloblastoma or squamous muscle carcinoma or anaplastic carcinoma, and obviously, you know, that melanoma is a biologically very aggressive tumor. So, if these kind of tumors spread posteriorly, obviously it can spread easily to the cranial fossa, especially your middle cranial fossa. So, obviously this one will be very life threatening. So, among all the spread, your posterior spread is going to contain the poor prognosis. Okay, prognosis will be poor. Comparatively, your inferior spread and the middle spread will have good prognosis because we will be able to remove the tumor very easily. So, these are the clinical features. So, clinical features completely give us an idea about where the tumor is actually present. So, we have to keenly observe what kind of feature is present in the patient. So, that with the clinical feature itself, we will be able to identify that this is the spread of the tumor. And you will be able to plan the treatment accordingly. So, coming to the spread. So, any kind of malignant tumor obviously can either have direct spread or it can have lymphatic spread. It can have hematogenous spread. So, among these, so usually the hematogenous spread is responsible for the systemic metastasis and this one is going to be completely rare in case of the maxillary sinus tumor. It is not usually seen. Among these two, the direct spread is the very commonest one. So, that is why I told you that it can either erode one of the walls of the maxillary sinus, either anterior or superior or medial or inferior or posterior one. So, if it is going to spread to the posterior area, it is going to have a very poor prognosis. And lymphatic spread is also common, especially with tumors such as your anaplastic carcinoma, adenocarcinoma, melanoma, because all these are aggressive tumors, only seen in 20 percentage of the malignant cases. So, obviously, in these cases, lymphatic spread is very common. If lymphatic spread is present, then it can spread to either the subantipolar lymph node or it can either spread to the upper jugular group of lymph nodes, jugular group of lymph nodes. So, these two are very common. Now, coming to the clinical classification, which is going to determine the prognosis of the maxillary sinus tumors. So, you have to remember about two important classification. One is called as Ongren's classification. Number two is called as Lederman's classification. So, one is Ongren's and next one is called as Lederman's classification. So, these two classification are very important to determine the prognosis of the maxillary sinus tumors. Yeah. So, now you can see a picture in the screen, right? In this, the first one, this one is called as the Ongren's classification. So, you can see an imaginary plane, that red color line. This is an imaginary line, which usually travels through two important points. This is the point A. And this is the point B. So, this is an imaginary plane extending between the medial canthus of the eye and the angle of the mandible. So, this imaginary plane is going to divide the maxillary sinus into two areas. Can you see here? An upper area and the lower area. So, we can call it as suprastructure 1. This is a suprastructure and this one is going to be the infrastructure 1. So, obviously, the tumors, if it is going to be predominantly present in suprastructure 1, it is going to have a poor prognosis. Why? Because it is related to the posterior aspect and it is related to the eyes. So, obviously, it is going to have a poor prognosis. But if it is going to be present in the infrastructural aspect, obviously, it is related to the either palatal aspect or your medial aspect of the nose. So, obviously, these tumors are easily treatable. 
by using your call value cooperation intraoral sinus surgery so that's why the tumors in the infrastructural area is going to have a good prognosis so this is called as ongrens classification so an imaginary plane extending through the middle canthus and angle of the mandible dividing the sinus into suprastructure and infrastructure one suprastructure poor prognosis and infrastructure good prognosis coming to the second classification it is called as lederman's classification so here you are going to draw two horizontal lines this is called as horizontal lines of sibilu so you can see this is the first line and this is the second line okay so these two lines are drawn number 1 passing through the floor of the orbit this one is going to be the orbit so the first line can be drawn through the floor of the orbit number 2 will be passing through the floor of the nasal cavity see this is the nasal cavity so we can able to draw the floor of the nasal cavity now these two horizontal lines of sibilu is going to divide the entire sinus region into three parts the first part this is called as the suprastructural part usually the ethmoidal sinus your frontal sinus and sphenoidal sinus so all these will be in this particular first region whereas the mesostructural part is the major part which is going to contain the entire maxillary sinus and the infrastructural part is going to contain the alveolus part of the tooth or the palate so this one is going to be the suprastructure this one is going to be contain the mesostructure and next one is going to be called as your infrastructure so usually this particular classification is usually to identify where the tumor is either it is going to spread to the frontal sinus or not whether it is going to spread to the infrastructure that is your palate of the ma maxilla or not or it is going to spread to the orbit or not so it is just to identify the spread of the tumor from the maxillary sinus usually if it is going to be only in the mesostructure it is going to be well confined if not it have started spreading to the adjacent sites which is going to have a very poor prognosis this is the second clinical classification determine the prognosis apart from that if it is going to be of a squamous cell carcinoma obviously you all you all would have known about the american joint committee classification agcc classification to just classify the squamous cell carcinoma into well differentiated one moderately differentiated one and poorly differentiated one so obviously if it is going to be well differentiated one it is going to have a very good prognosis because of well differentiating tumor cells obviously the poor prognosis or the poorly differentiated will have poor differentiation of tissues diagnosis is very difficult obviously it is going to have a poor prognosis also this is about the third classification determining the prognosis of the maxillary sinus tumor if it is going to be of your squamous cell carcinoma that's all about the clinical classification determining the prognosis coming to the diagnosis so obviously you have to go for radiographical examination so you have waters view which is specific for the maxillary sinus you can do x ray skull in this waters view or obviously you can go for ct scan and mri obviously ct scan will be able to rule out the spread of the tumor towards particular wall and mri will be able to rule out the soft tissue changes so obviously you have to go for both ct and mri before you perform any surgical procedure then you can go for biopsy so obviously biopsy will be mandatory to determine what kind of tumor it is so what kind of benign tumor it is or what kind of malignancy it is or to determine the differentiating features of the tumor cells you have to go for biopsy and obviously you can also do endoscopy of nose if possible usually ent people will do this endoscopy of the nose so obviously all these are going to be the diagnostic features so what is view of x ray skull ct and mri biopsy and your endoscopy of the nose so all these are going to be the diagnostic criteria coming to treatment so how will you treat the tumors of the maxillary sinus so obviously the treatment is focusing towards multi modality treatment so multi modality treatment which means you can do surgery or you can give radiotherapy or you can go for chemotherapy so radiation chemotherapy and surgery so usually multi modality management is for your maxillary sinus tumors so chemotherapy we can either give drugs like methotrexate especially in case of inoperable cases which is going to be very aggressive like your uh, anaplastic carcinoma which will also have secondaries of neck okay fixed secondaries of neck where the surgery is contraindicated we can go for chemotherapy 
and obviously radiotherapy can be given either post operatively or pre operatively because most of the tumors of maxillary sinus are going to be radio sensitive so you can able to give the radiotherapy very commonly in case of these tumors and obviously surgery so usually we will be going for caldwell look operation or nowadays even we can go for fess functional endoscopic sinus surgery for the treatment of maxillary sinus tumors so that's all about the tumors of the maxillary sinus so it is an important short note for you so you have to write it under different headings again like classification of tumors that is into benign and malignant then the clinical features just remember the anatomical picture so depending upon which wall it is going to erode the clinical features can vary and that clinical feature itself can give you a clue about which wall is going to be involved in the maxillary sinus tumors then write the complications especially in case of the posterior spread of the maxillary sinus tumors then your spread it can be direct spread lymphatic spread and the hematogenous spread and all these spread are very commonly seen only in case of your malignant tumors then your clinical classification will determine the prognosis like your ongren's classification and lederman's classification and then your diagnostic criteria and then your treatment this is a multimodality treatment so that's all about the tumors of the maxillary sinus so i hope it is clear for everyone right